A warning from Tesla to some of its workers. The company's human resources chief told California employees yesterday that if they're called back to work and choose to stay home because they're concerned about the coronavirus, they may lose unemployment benefits. Tesla did say, though, that if it happened, it would be the state's doing, not the company's. This comes as the standoff over reopening Tesla's Fremont, California factory appears to be easing. For more on this, let's welcome Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. Some of his constituents work at the Fremont plant, and uh, Congressman, it's good to see you. Good morning, Becky. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit first about the situation on the ground there, because I think it's difficult for people in different parts of the country to really imagine uh, how this plays out and what the tensions are without knowing. How, how many cases of coronavirus do you have there? How, how big of an issue and how concerned are you about what's happening with coronavirus in your district? Thankfully, in Alameda County, uh, we have you know, just over about 1,000 cases. Uh, we're seeing, on average, around 30 to 40 new cases uh, each day. The county next to us, Contra Costa, had their first day of zero cases on Monday and then went back up to 14. So, so we're starting to stabilize uh, in the low uh, you know, double digits of cases, uh, which is a good thing. And we should be rewarded that, for that by being able to come out. But we have to make sure we do it in a responsible way. And I'm, I'm glad to see that Tesla and the county uh, have worked out an agreement where workers can come back and start manufacturing cars uh, as early as Monday. What did you think about how this all played out? It was a little ugly on both sides. Well, I, I think, again, you can't be stubborn. You can't be impatient. You have to really just follow the science. And I, I don't think it was productive uh, that, you know, Tesla was threatening to leave the state uh, you know, when you have over 10,000 employees in a city of nearly 250,000 people, uh, it's not as if those employees would go to work and stay on site and, and never leave. They would go back uh, into a very large uh, community. And so it's not just protecting the workers of Tesla, it's protecting uh, the other people uh, in the city of Fremont and the county of Alameda. But again, I, I'm glad that uh, it was resolved and, and hopefully uh, they're making cars uh, and, you know, people are getting a paycheck very soon. What do you think about the the company's HR representation saying that if you choose not to come back once they've reopened the plant, that you could lose your unemployment benefits? So they, they said it's the state's doing. And I guess that is the case in a lot of states. If you choose not to go back when your job is reopened, you will lose benefits. Is that the way it should work? You know, Becky, these are uncertain times. People are anxious when they see the, the death rate continue to go up. I, I think just do do what's right and find ways to accommodate workers who are concerned by showing uh, a safe working environment. And people should not lose their wages and benefits and bond of employment if they have legitimate concerns. And, and I just hope we all can show flexibility on the government side, uh, on the employer side, and what we're asked to do uh, at home uh, if we're not an essential worker. But just do the right thing. I mean, just stay, take a step back from impatience and, and being stubborn and wanting to get out and just think, what is the right thing to do? Don't lose sight of that. It, it sounds like you've got a fine line to walk. I, I would guess that this has divided your constituency pretty sharply with those who are wanting to get back to work and make sure that they can earn money and those who are concerned about their safety. Maybe they have underlying issues. Is, is that what's happening? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't want us to be at home a second longer than uh, we have to. But uh, you can't attack the health crisis by solving the economic crisis. You can solve the economic crisis by attacking the health care crisis. And the worst thing for the economy, actually, would be if we all come back up, come back out, reopen Main Street and factories and workplaces, and then we see a second spike. Uh, I think that would be just pulverizing. That's why we're passing uh, tomorrow the HEROES Act on the House floor, uh, which will put a trillion uh, new dollars uh, into the economy for state and local governments to take care of their needs, as well as continue to reload the Paycheck Protection Plan and adds further benefits for employers uh, to keep their employees. Uh, it'll never be cheaper than doing that right now. The Republicans sound like they're not going to go along with that at, at all. Um, are there places where you find common ground, where maybe there is some some area where the two sides will be able to come together? Because if not, it's not going to pass uh, the, the Senate. You know, Becky, the common ground is among America's governors. Republicans and Democrats are saying we, we have to help uh, state governments. And, and so that's why we're doing that. We've united Republican and Democratic governors. And also the president's uh, Fed chair uh, said yesterday that Congress has to do more to stimulate the economy. So we're doing 
uh, just that. But the opposite of, of that is what Senator McConnell has proposed, which is to allow states to go bankrupt, which is just not uh, an option. So we're responding to the need, and I, I think the public sentiment is there. I hope we can come to the table with Republicans speed and, and make sweeping changes to stimulate the economy in the last two months in a bipartisan way. And I hope we can do that again in the next couple of weeks. What do you think should be getting paid out directly to, to, to citizens, to taxpayers? You know, in the HEROES Act, uh, there's up to $6,000 uh, in stimulus uh, dollars for families. But uh, also, I think hazard pay, you know, we have $200 billion in hazard pay for the frontline uh, workers, you know, the people uh, who have put themselves out there, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, you know, janitors, uh, cleanup crew at a hospital. We have to take care of them, not only to make sure that they are made right uh, during these traumatizing times. You have a next generation of doctors and nurses and people who want to go into health care, police officers, firefighters. If they see us not take care of those individuals, you're going to see a steep decline in, in future recruits. And that's not good for the future of medicine and first responders. Yeah, on that line, again, we had Senator Rob Portman on from Ohio yesterday, and he's a Republican from the Senate. So if there's an idea he's talking about, I wonder if that could gain traction on both sides, too. But he was saying that he thinks that even if you go back to work, particularly for low-income workers, people who are making minimum wage, that if you are working and on the front lines, you don't have to give up all of your unemployment benefits that you'd be getting if you were staying home, because obviously some people will feel more comfortable going back than others, but maybe they should be getting some sort of hazard pay. His thought was that they could keep $450 a week of the $600 they'd be getting if they were staying home and continue to be earning a salary to, to thank those who are on the front lines. What do you think about an idea like that? And, you know, Becky, I'm flexible. I, I like ideas like that because they uh, fall between, again, letting uh, the states go bankrupt and us doing nothing further to help people and what we've proposed uh, for the HEROES Act. I think, again, showing flexibility, agility, uh, and responsiveness during these uncertain times is what the American people want. Uh, our heroes are worth it, and, and we, should, we should reflect that in the way we try and uh, respond to their needs. Yeah. Hey, Congressman, uh, just wanted to ask you about the, the, the Senator Portman proposal, in part because, you know, after he made that proposal, people wrote in, wrote in to me and said he's effectively incentivizing people, uh, yes, to go back to work, but he's effectively, <clears throat> A, disincentivizing people who may have pre-existing pre conditions and effectively incentivizing people who may actually be sick to go back to work. One of the very complicated balancing issues in this whole thing has been the idea of how do you incentivize people to go to work, but how do you incentivize the right people to go to work and, and, to, not, uh, and to not make people make decisions uh, simply out of economic desperation. And I think there's a real sort of challenge in terms of trying to find that balance. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and I would say, first and foremost, testing, testing, testing. Uh, you, widespread access at the testing will help us determine who should be going back to work and who should not be. Funding the diagnostic that will tell people if they've already had this, of course. Uh, but also increasing through the Defense Production Act the materials that are available to employers so they can sanitize the workplace. Most employers are telling me, even if I could physically reopen by an order of a county or the government, I don't have the materials that could make my workspace uh, clean. So we really need to ramp up production so that uh, employers could make the workspaces uh, safe. As you said, it, it's really a employer by employer, person by person decision. I just think we should show maximum flexibility.